Italy has many archaeological wonders, but one of the most impressive ones is Pompeii, a city that was buried by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. The eruption preserved Pompeii as a unique document of Greco Roman life, with buildings, artifacts, and skeletons left behind in the entombed city. One of the most famous sites in Pompeii is the House of the Fawn, where we can see the remains of a wealthy family and their lavish lifestyle. The house was decorated with frescoes, mosaics, and statues, and had a large garden with exotic plants and animals. One of the artifacts discovered near the area is an exceptionally preserved and sealed chamber tomb. This tomb is not only a remarkable archaeological discovery but also a fascinating window into the ancient world of European mythology. Pompeii is not only about human history, it also contains traces of ancient mythology, especially from Greek and Roman traditions. One of the most intriguing myths that can be found in Pompeii is that of Cerberus, the three headed dog that guarded the gates of the underworld. Cerberus was one of the monstrous offspring of Typhon and Echidna, two powerful creatures that were enemies of Zeus, the king of the gods. Cerberus had snakes for heads, a serpent's tail, and claws that could tear apart anyone who tried to escape from Hades, the lord of the underworld. Cerberus was also known for his capture by Heracles, one of the greatest heroes of Greek mythology. Heracles had to perform 12 impossible tasks as part of his penance for killing his wife and children in a fit of madness. One of these tasks was to capture Cerberus alive and bring him to King Eurystheus, who was afraid to face him alone. Heracles managed to subdue Cerberus by using his strength and cunning. He tied him up with ropes and dragged him across Greece while avoiding his bites and barks. He finally reached Eurystheus's palace in Tiryns where he presented Cerberus as his trophy. Eurystheus was so terrified that he begged Heracles to take Cerberus back to Hades. Heracles agreed but only if Eurystheus would give him his golden apples as a reward. Heracles then released Cerberus into Hades' realm where he became one of his loyal servants along with other fearsome beasts such as Hydra, Orthrus and Chimera. The tomb we are going to explore today has a fresco depicting Cerberus standing between Heracles and Hermes, another messenger god who accompanied Heracles on some of his adventures. The fresco probably shows one scene from Heracles' labors involving Cerberus. The tomb belongs to an unknown person who lived during the Roman Republic period which lasted from 509 BCE to 27 BCE, or during the Roman Imperial period which lasted from 31 BCE to 476 CE. The tomb was discovered during an archaeological investigation in 2023 by a team from Italy's Ministry of Culture. The tomb was sealed by an original tough slab that used Roman concrete or rubblework walls as an facing material. Behind this slab lay a large chamber that housed several frescoes on its walls and ceilings. The frescoes depict various scenes from Greek mythology, such as ichthyo centaurs which are fish horsemen, winged arots which are cherub-like beings, naiads which are water nymphs and satyrs which are half-man half-goat creatures. These figures were associated with love and sexual intercourse in Roman culture. The most striking fresco in this chamber is that of Cerberus standing between Heracles and Hermes. This fresco shows us how ancient people imagined their encounters with mythical creatures such as monsters or gods. The front view shows us how Heracles captured Cerberus by using his club, which is a symbol of power to restrain him while he held his leash, which is a symbol of control. Heracles wore his characteristic lion skin, a symbol of courage over his shoulders while he carried his club on his right hand. The back view shows us how Hermes helped Heracles by holding his winged sandals, a symbol of speed, on his feet while he pointed at Cerberus with his staff, a symbol of authority. Hermes wore his winged hat, which is a symbol of intelligence on his head while he smiled at Heracles with his beard which is a symbol of wisdom. The scene probably depicts one moment when Heracles had just captured Cerberus from Hades' realm or when he was about to do so before bringing him back to Eurystheus's palace. The front view also shows us how Heracles presented Cerberus as his trophy to Eurystheus who was terrified by his sight. Heracles wore his lion skin over his shoulders while he held his club on his right hand. He also wore a wreath of laurel leaves, a symbol of victory on his head while he smiled at Eurystheus with his beard. The back view also shows us how Hermes gave Cerberus back to Hades who was grateful for his service. Hermes wore his winged sandals on his feet while he pointed at Cerberus with his staff. He also wore a wreath of olive leaves, a symbol of peace on his head while he smiled at Hades with his beard. The scene probably depicts one moment when Heracles had just returned Cerberus to Hades' realm or when he was about to do so before bringing him back to Eurystheus's palace. 
The tomb's inhabitants still remains on the funeral bed they were laid to rest on and is surrounded by a rich collection of objects. The chamber also contains an altar with vessels for libations. There are still many questions associated with this amazing site but the team continues to investigate it and hopes to uncover more information about its owner. This is the end of our video about the tomb of Cerberus, a remarkable archaeological discovery that reveals the ancient world of Pompeii and Greek mythology. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please like, share and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you next time.